Hello. What's going on guys, by the way this is Mark, and you are in Hobby TV. For today's video, I will show you how to culture Daphnia in easy way, but before that, I would like to shout out our FB group friends who supported us on our project. Daphnia are one of the finest and most universally accepted live foods for most fish. Known as, water fleas, because of their jerky movements. Daphnia are tiny live organisms that can be a nutritious food and is an excellent source of high protein for pet fish. They have a relatively short lifespan, about 8 weeks, and mature within 6 to 8 days. Start a Daphnia culture, you'll need to set up their habitat and care for them correctly. If you follow the right steps, you can raise a healthy culture Daphnia that can serve as an all-natural food source for your fish pets. Setting up the culture tank. Materials needed. Culture tank. 1 half teaspoon yeast. Warm water. Small amount of Daphnia starter. Plastic bottle for mixing. Unchlorinated water or dechlorinated water. Fill a container with chlorine-free water, treat chlorinated with dechlorinator, you can purchase it online or at a pet shops. Daphnia culture doesn't need much oxygen to thrive, containers kept outside with a large surface area don't need any aeration at all. Now add a small amount of Daphnia on our culture tank. Adding the Daphnia to the tank. Purchase the Daphnia online store, pet store or on your local seller. Place the container or bag that the Daphnia arrived into the water for around 15 to 20 minutes so that they become acclimated to the water temperature. Pour the Daphnia into the water. Open up the bag and carefully pour them into your culture tank. Tip. I don't aerate my cultures, even in summer, if you decide to, make sure it is very gentle, and the bubbles are coarse. If the bubbles are too fine, they tend to get caught in the shell of Daphnia forcing them up to the surface where they get trapped in the surface tension and die. Change the water 20 to 40% twice a week, remember you shouldn't use regular tap water that contains chlorine, you can use the old water from an existing aquarium or you can dechlorinated tap water. 
and water change is necessary to flush away excess dissolved phosphorus, nitrites and nitrates, if water changes are done more frequent than this, it is possible to increase in production. Use green water high in algae, Daphnia thrive in green water that has algae, the Daphnia will feed off the algae in the water and can use it as a food source. Daphnia culture can be fed one or several of the following feeds, 1. Spirulina algae, available at aquaculture supply companies and health food stores, 2. Chlorella algae, available at health food stores, 3. Green water, containing algae, 4. Active baker's yeast, available in grocery, baking supply stores, 5. Powdered split pea soup mix, from a bulk food store, 6. Whole wheat flour, 7. Paprika, available in grocery store, 8. Soy flour, available in grocery store. The indicated above food for Daphnia that chlorella algae and the active baker's yeast to be the easiest and most effective feeds to work with when culturing, the split pea soup and whole wheat and soy flour feeds are mixed with powdered paprika, about one part paprika to ten parts soup mix or flour, the paprika is used as a color enhancer for your fish. Day 2 Day 3. Treat Daphnia like any other aquatic animal regarding pH and water conditions. Keep the water temperature between 18 to 22 Celsius 64 to 72 Fahrenheit. Daphnia cultures prefer cooler climates. So leave them in a cooler place like a basement or garage. If you are keeping the Daphnia culture outside, make sure it doesn't go above 22 Celsius 72 Fahrenheit or it will prevent the Daphnia from reproducing. Day 4. There are two ways you can feed Daphnia cultures, one is a visual judgment of water clarity. And the second is to monitor Daphnia densities by using a test tube as stated above. The ideal level to feed the Daphnia should be enough to cloud the tank up to slightly noticeable opacity. Feed the Daphnia of active yeast per day, you can purchase active yeast online or at a grocery store. When you add the yeast to the water, it will become cloudy. Approximate amounts to feed Daphnia culture tank's size. Examine the clarity of the water the next day. The water should be clear the next day. If it's still cloudy it's an indication that you're feeding them too much. Lower the amount of yeast you feed in the Daphnia. If the water clears up before 24 hours is over, it means that you need to feed them more. Adjust the food levels until they eat all of the yeast over a 24-hour period. Day 5. Trivia. Laboratory literature searches that everything from manure, yeast, live phytoplankton, microalgae, finely ground trout chow, alfalfa meal, to snail manure, soy flour and other finnerly ground foods have been cited as foods for Daphnia, but some of these items don't serve directly as food for Daphnia but the microorganisms like fungi, yeast, bacteria and protists that grow in water are what serves our main food for Daphnia. Snails should be present in every Daphnia culture to clean up uneaten, settled food particles. Also snail shells serves as biomedia for nitrifying bacteria in the water. Culture problems, a good indication that a culture is healthy is if there are Daphnia of all ages present. If a culture struggling, you will find that there are no larvae or juveniles, they are all adults. If a culture suddenly dies off, test the water to see what caused it. Usually it is poor water conditions caused by overfeeding. Don't clean out the culture container unless another Daphnia source is available.
Tip. Change the water but don't remove all the debris on the bottom as it will contain dormant eggs. Let the water green and reseed with more Daphnia or wait until the dormant egg hatch. It is easy to overfeed Daphnia cultures causing catastrophic collapse of the colony. Not sure what kills the Daphnia but it could be depleted oxygen, high ammonia, high nitrites, high nitrates or high phosphates. Day 6 Mantra Feed, feed, water change, harvest, feed, feed, water change, harvest. If you stick to a schedule like this you will successfully keep Daphnia, if you feed. Feed, feed. Forget the water change. Forget to harvest your Daphnia culture will most likely crash. Daphnia predators such as Planaria flatworms like Dugesia get into the culture they will eat away the profitability of your operation, so if they are present in your culture it is best for you to start over again with clean water and new pure Daphnia. Daphnia will give you other clues of how they are doing, normally under healthy good conditions out of stress, all Daphnia are females and reproduce by parthenogenesis, which is their eggs develop without being fertilized by a male. These eggs develop directly into tiny female Daphnia that are born from the mother. When Daphnia culture becomes stressed by poor water conditions, improper feeding or not enough food, high temperatures, low temperatures all female populations will start to produce some tiny males. These males then mate with the females and the resulting eggs that are formed are resting eggs. These resting eggs are designed to survive harsh conditions such as winter freezing, summer hot and dry periods where the pond completely dries up. The resting eggs is a dark blackish case carried on the back of the female, and if you see these epipium forming it's a clear indication something needs to be changed quickly. Remember feed, feed, water change, harvest, feed, feed, water change, harvest. Harvesting, if you notice that Daphnia are becoming overcrowded, harvest them more regularly. Examine the Daphnia population before harvesting. If you notice they aren't reproducing as fast as usual, delay the harvesting so their harvest can rise. A healthy Daphnia culture can be harvested daily or every other day once it's stable depending on the size of the population. Now let's try to feed our fish with Daphnia. Following are the results of some experiments ranked from the best to least effective Daphnia foods. Rank number 1. Combination of Baker's active yeast. Dried spirulina algae, dried chlorella. Rank number 2. Dried ground split peas. Paprika, color enhancer. Dried spirulina. Dried chlorella algae. Rank number 3. Chlorella algae. Rank number 4. Dried spirulina algae. Rank number 5. Dried ground split peas. Paprika. Baker's active dried yeast. Rank number 6. Baker's active dried yeast. Conclusion. Therefore it stands to reason that Daphnia should perform well fed, grow and reproduce, on dried algae products. However other food items have traditionally proven to be effective like baker's active yeast and other plant products like dried and ground split peas will serve as feed as well. Trivia. Baker's active dried yeast makes Daphnia reproduce quickly, while the spirulina. Chlorella. Split peas made the Daphnia grow big and robust. Remember our mantra. Feed, feed. Water change. Harvest. Feed, feed. Water change. Harvest. 
Thanks for watching on our video, hopefully you have learned something from it especially to the beginners. And if you are new to the channel please hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to get updated for more upcoming videos. Happy fish kepping guys. Thank you very much. May God bless us all.